Hello YouTube, back for another review. Today we are reviewing not one but two things. We are reviewing the Anakin Disruptor Fantastic. and the Anakin iSub Apex with Prism Flavor Enhancement. Uh, the Prism Flavor Enhancement, as far as I understand, is just how they built their coil and the tank around it to enhance the flavor production and alongside the airflow that also helps enhance the flavoring. Um, the iSub Apex is uh, basically the big brother to the regular iSub. It uses a sub-ohm coil which on the disruptor reads at 0.47 ohms the two, and it also uses a 2 ohm coil. Now I have been using this coil for about a week now and normally what I have found with doing sub-ohm the coils usually only last a couple of days, four days max for me. Um, I've been using this for a week now and I haven't had any flavor loss. Normally I get flavor loss about two days in. And this is day seven and I'm not having any flavor loss whatsoever. I really, I think they really did what they meant to do with this because when you, it doesn't shoot the liquid into your lungs, it doesn't matter how hard you pull. Um, and the the airflow is up top here this is your airflow here you also have an airflow here in the drip tip where you can open that little hatch hole there or you can close it down well, i said that backwards because they just opened it back up this here is also your airflow and there is glass behind the airflow and i've filled this several times it's a top fill so you just twist this open and you have your filling holes there um, I filled it several times. I go through this tank, it's a two mil tank. Um, I go through in about eight hours when I'm doing sub ohm. With the two ohm, it lasts me about 11 hours. Um, and I've noticed that the airflow being up top, it's a lot better than it being down below because when I fill it, normally with the, with the airflow that you have on the bottom, you get the leaking or the seeping from the liquid going into the well. You don't have that with this at all. In fact, um, the coil, you can do like a hot swap. You actually don't have to dismantle anything with this. I'll show you. So to do the coil, you have your tank here and you just tip it upside down and remove the bottom piece here. And the coil itself actually has the 510 threads on it. This is what connects to your battery. There's nothing to connect to on the base at all. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. And then to change your coil, you just pull this out and it's got a little guide there that shows you how to put this coil in. Um, there's two flat sides here and you just line it up with the two flat sides there. Now you can dump your liquid when your coil is, when, when the base is off. As soon as you take this base off, it's an open unit. So then you just slide your coil back in, line it up with those little hatch marks. No screwing in, no getting messy. My fingers are just a tiny bit oily. I don't have liquid everywhere. It's something I can easily wipe off. And then you just screw it back on there and you're ready to go. You can, it takes seconds to swap your coil out. It's, it's fantastic actually. This is the best design I have come across so far. Um, now, I'm not one to just promote something because it was sent to me, but for the first time I've gotten something sent to me that there are no quirks. There's nothing that I need to bypass. There's nothing that I need to figure out. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. Um, the one caveat that I do have, and it's not about the performance of the tank at all, it's the fact that if this glass here breaks, there is no replacement for it. This tank does not come apart. Um, the only thing that comes off of it is the drip tip and the base so far that I've found. Um, I may be wrong about that. Maybe I haven't d dove far enough into it, but um, from what I can find online and from what I've experienced personally with it, it does not come apart at all. So if you break your glass, you do have to get a whole nother tank. So while that is a caveat of mine, because it's so surrounded with all this metal, I don't foresee that being an immediate issue. 
Um, I, I, I really like the fact that it's got the top airflow and there's glass behind the airflow. That way, no matter how much you're vaping on it, no matter how much of a freight train you're turning it into, it's not going to leak. It's not going to seep. It's not anything. You can hold it upside down for hours and it's not going to come through the air flow. It's not going to come through anywhere. It's not even going to come through the coil. Typically, if you leave a coil upside down for so long, it starts to drip the liquid out because of gravity. This one doesn't do that. I haven't figured out why yet because it's just, it's a normal, um, it's a normal dripper build inside of a metal coil with a screen over top of it. There's no fancy cotton around the outside. There's no swirly whirly wires going on inside. It's a typical standard build. Um, and I did find that if you are persistent enough, you can pull the coils apart to do a rebuild on it. And like you just got your cotton, you got your wire, you stuff it in there, you're done. Um, it's not difficult to rebuild these coils if you're a money miser like me and you like to rebuild your own stuff or you like to see how things work. Um, it goes back together really simple. It doesn't destroy the coil at all. Um, and it, it just, it vapes really, really well. I get a delicious cloud off of this. Um, I don't get as much of a cloud off of the two ohm coil, but it's almost a negligible difference. It's it's really not something that I would say, oh, the two ohm that puts out a really crappy cloud. But it is something that I could say, okay, well, I noticed a little bit of a difference. Um, I have noticed normally I use 18 milligrams in something like my K-Fun. This is a normal drip, dripper build housed in a tank. I can use 18 to 24 milligrams. 24 is kind of pushing it for me. Um, in this, I can't use over six milligrams before it starts burning my throat. It's very, very, very efficient in vaporizing all of the liquid on there. Um, it's a, it's a powerhouse. It goes through liquid really fast. I'm not used to that. So that's new to me. Now, people that have used, been using sub tanks, uh, the Kanger sub tank, the iSub, the iCloud fishbone, stuff like that. They're used to going through liquid really fast. So that, you know, wouldn't come as a surprise to you. Um, but the flavor, it gets me every time. I've used sub tanks, I've used drippers, I've used, you know, my K-Fun. Even with my K-Fun, after a couple of days on the same build, I'm losing flavor. It's not as prominent as it was before. Seven days, I haven't lost flavor, not even a little bit. Um, there was a point where I wondered, am I losing flavor? Am I just adapting to the taste? Because that does happen. I throw my K-Fun on there, vape on it for a couple hours, throw this back on there, one pull, and it's full force flavor, absolute full power flavor. And I really, really like that about it. I, you know, that's one thing that's been making me kind of unhappy with my K-Fun is that after a few days, I'm getting a flavor loss. And it's not because of the liquid, it's not because of anything that I'm doing wrong, it's just that there's so much gunk build up on the wires that you're, you can't taste the flavor beyond the gunk anymore. And so I'm constantly rebuilding every couple of days. With this, um, I did rebuild a coil and it worked beautifully. It worked absolutely beautifully. There was no tricks, there was no hacks, there was no nothing. It was just build the thing thing and put it back together. Um, so I really, really like that about it. And I have not tested to see how long my build will last flavor wise, but I did notice that my build on their coil the flavor was significantly more prominent than it is in my K-Fun. So I'm thinking it's something to do with the airflow, the way the vapor travels through everything, um, the way they have, however it works. I'm thinking it has something to do with that, not necessarily what's inside the coil. Um, the other guest we have today is the Anakin Disruptor. Um, I really think that the Disruptor is the best possible mod for this ice up. I've tried it on the ice stick. I've tried it on a couple of stick mods and this one powers it the best. Now I could attribute that to the fact that it's got a constant power output, meaning with normal like stick mods, you have your 18650 battery inside this really nice mod and you get a minute um, power output. So you have full power, full amperage, full everything for about five seconds, and then it starts to drift off in the power output. 
This doesn't do that. You get the full output for the full 15 seconds before it cuts you off. There is no drop in wattage. There's no drop in power supply. It's a, it's a honest to goodness, continuous, everything it's got all at once output, whatever you've set it to. Right now I'm running this 0.5 ohm coil at 22 watts. You don't have to worry about how accurate the battery level is. When it tells you how much battery it's got left, it's actually quite accurate. Um, I have timed it. I get three and a half days out of a charge. When I'm using it at 22 watts, I get probably closer to th almost three days out of one charge. Um, and I'm going through two or three fills a day on this tank with when I'm using my K-Fun, it's a five mil tank. Obviously it doesn't burn the liquid as fast as this does. I'll get, you know, I'll fill this up at the end of every day. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using quite a bit of liquid and I'm getting really, really good battery life out of this thing. Um, you can flip the screen, which I'm not gonna do because I'm dyslexic and it will just take much longer than it's worth to show you guys how to flip it. It's in the instruction manual, you can flip the screen. Um, because of the way I have it flipped, my up and down wattage voltage buttons are backwards. It is a USB pass-through. This little button here above the charging port, it'll actually tell you the condition of the battery if having the, the meter on the front isn't good enough. You can push this little button and it will light up. Right now it's yellow. It's kind of hard to see if, when you're in the daylight, so you got to kind of look at it. Right now it's yellow, but it'll do yellow, green, red. Um, green means that there's more than 70% of a charge remaining. Yellow means 70 to uh, 31% and red is 30% or less of your battery life. And I, I found that to be pretty accurate with the meter that's on the front. Um, it takes, a, mm, well, I leave it on there overnight. It, the instruction manual says to leave it on there for at least four hours. So it's a, it's a pretty quick charge. It is a, I wanna say 2200 mAh battery. And the battery, there's no way to take the battery out. There actually isn't, like you don't put an 18650 in. What you do, and it won't come up with this tank on there, This is your control body and this is your battery. So you just slide up, battery, control body. So you can interchange your batteries, you can do hot swap. It remembers your last setting even when there's no battery on it. So when you throw a new battery on there or throw the same battery, whatever, um, it remembers your settings and it goes back to what you originally had it set for. It doesn't like reset itself or anything. Um, it's got a magnetic, piece here that helps sync the battery in. So when I slide it onto these rails, which of course right now I'm being dyslexic, there we go. And you can feel it sucking it down, kind of. And then you just set it on there. It's got a really good seat, so I can't like drop it. I have to, you know, hit it pretty hard to get it to disconnect. And it's not going to, even if it does disconnect, it's not going to, it's got those rails, so it's not just going to come off. Um, I've dropped this thing a lot. <laughs> I've dropped it a lot. And it hasn't come apart on me. You know how you drop your cell phone and pieces go everywhere and it practically obliterates itself and you have to put it back together and tell it it's going to be okay and everything? Don't have to do that with this one. I really, really, really like this battery. It comes, the battery cells come in blue, pink, green, red, orange, yellow, aquamarine, silver, I believe. The control body though only comes in black or silver. So you're kind of limited on that, but the, the they're called an inno cell. The inno cells are actually pretty easy to get. A lot of people are starting to carry them. Um, Vaporworld.biz has them. Kangerwholesaleusa.com has them. Uh, I believe um, AmericanEsigSupply.com has them. Uh, more people are starting to pick these things up because they're really good quality. It is a fantastic battery. Um, I used the iStick 20 watt mod for a while and I did, I really like this battery. It 
doesn't hold up to getting wet <laughs> very well at all. Uh, a couple of my friends have fried their batteries, these ice sticks, um, accidentally dropping them in the sink or something for a couple of seconds and the whole thing is toast. So it's not, it's not the most durable thing on the planet, but for a variable wattage, variable voltage, it's super cheap and it works. It works really well. Um, just don't take it apart and decide to look and see what's behind those little tiny screws because you like to mess with things and then your buttons fall off and then the housing for the buttons breaks because you're trying to get it back together and then you can't so now it's not variable voltage anymore and yeah that's my second one so back to our guest um i really like this battery I really, really like this battery. You can do, you can switch between variable voltage and variable wattage. It will tell you the ohm of your coil. Basic, you know, it, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of like a DNA box mod. It doesn't have a whole bunch of different features and all this. It doesn't have a puff counter. It doesn't have anything like that. It's very basic in its operation. Voltage, wattage, uh, battery level, and the ohms of your atomizer. Um, it will fire down to a point. 2 ohm and it will fire I believe all the way up to 5 ohms. Why anyone would go that high I'm not entirely sure. I've personally never gone above 2. There may be something to super high ohming that I know nothing about. Feel free to educate me. Um, but so back to this combo here. If you're looking for a reliable works like it should every single time. Great flavor, great battery life. I would seriously get this set up. Um, Inakin Disruptor and the Inakin iSub Apex. It's a, it's a fantastic combination, it really is. Um, and if you watch any of my videos, you know I am the first one to say, nope, don't like it, or I like it, but. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you that something's great if it's not. And, you know, it looks nice. It's got, you know, the stainless steel or aluminum. I'm not sure which one it is. I'm, it should be stainless steel. But it, I, re I, I really like the way they have the airflow. I can't say that enough. I really like the way they have the airflow because there's no leaking. There's no seeping or oozing. I've, I've dealt with plenty of sub tanks that come in through the door and they're always complaining about how they're leaking from the well. They fill them. They're leaking from the well. It floods, they're leaking. That's another thing, flooding. I have tried to flood this thing and I have failed. I cannot flood it. I go outside where it's freezing and it's cold outside. And then I come inside where it's nice and toasty, roasty warm. And when normal atomizers would flood, you know, cause liquid contraction expands, you go outside, it's like, holy crap, it's cold. And you come inside, you're like, oh, it's nice and warm. I'm gonna flood everything and get in your mouth. I have not had that problem with this. Just gonna say it. I was I was impressed. I thought, well, there goes a tank of liquid. No, no. That I took a vape. Like as soon as I walked through the door, I took a vape. Waited for it to warm up. Got back to room temperature. Took another vape. Nothing. There was no flooding. Whereas any other atomizer that I use, my K5, I don't have that issue hardly at all. Every once in a very great while, I have that issue. But they actually did a pretty good job with that one. This I have not. I can't get it to flood. I've tried to flood. I'll sit there and hoof on it without pushing the button. No flooding. I might get a teensy, 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 tiny bit of liquid shot into my mouth. Like, maybe like a little mist. But that's if I'm trying to make it happen. When just normal vaping, even freight train vaping. Not getting it. And of course, you know, it's off because I took the battery off so a normal person should turn their battery on. This thing clouds like a freight train. Even with the two ohm coil, it clouds like that. So I am really impressed. It did, it brings the flavor across beautifully. Right now I'm testing a new recipe that I'm trying to make. Uh, it's uh, apple cider. And whew, I can really taste the apple. It's a, it's a lingering apple flavor. Normally when I use the apple, it's a, an immediate hit of apple and then it kind of dissipates, but this this is giving me like a lingering apple on the back of my tongue flavor. There's no sweetener even in it at all. It's just apple 
cinnamon and some buttercream and some pie crust, I think. I, I don't remember what I used. I wrote it down. But I'm again, I'm really, it's the apple is lingering. I can taste the cinnamon, but it's not as powerful as the apple. And that's another thing that blows me away is for like a minute and a half after one vape, I'm still tasting the flavor. And this is a week old coil, okay? I'm very, very, very pleased with this setup. If you don't have one, you need to go get one. I don't care what website you use, just go get one. Anakin Disruptor, Anakin iSub Apex. These are fantastic pieces. It's their best quality yet. And in all honesty, I've used a lot of Anakin products and I found that other makers were surpassing them with the durability, reliability, um, I wasn't super impressed with some of the latest things they came out with and then this happened and I am impressed. I am vastly impressed. I own a vapor shop. I deal with a lot of other makers. I deal with a lot of other mods and drippers and tanks and everything and I am impressed. I'm very, very impressed and I don't, I don't think I'm going to stop using it anytime soon. Using this thing is absolutely effortless. I don't have any issues getting it to vape. I don't have any button misfires. You know, sometimes you're using a box mod and you hit the button and nothing happens and you gotta push the button again. Had that a lot with my eye stick. Don't have that with this. I don't have any issues. The buttons are very tactile. So you can, oh, I turned it off. You can hear them functioning. It's not, it's not like where you breathe on it and the button goes off. The buttons, they don't wiggle. There's n next to no wiggle room in the buttons whatsoever. The fire button is fantastic. It's actually, the fire button is lit. So when you're using it, it will, it, I think they went a little overboard on telling you your battery level. I don't know if you can see it, but when I push this button, it, see that it lit up red. It's telling me it's almost out of battery life. And if I push this button back here, it's gonna be red. So no matter where you're looking at on the device, you're gonna know exactly how much battery life you have left. Now, obviously the higher wattage is gonna drop your battery really fast. Um, this thing goes clear up to 50 watts. And at, even at 50 watts, even at 10 watts, it's full power all the time full amperage, everything that this thing's got, it's thrown at you the entire time you're pushing the button. You never have anything to worry about with that. And it fires lightning quick. I'm gonna push the button. So, I mean, you're not sitting there waiting. You don't have to on it. I mean, some people, they blow through it first before they take a pull off of their atomizer. If I do that with this thing, <laughs> I'm gonna be burning a lot of liquid. Watch. It fires so fast and because it's full power all at once, it's not a gradual increase and a gradual decline. It's there and gone. As soon as you let off the button, it's gone. There's no, a lot of mods, um, the power will decrease, start decreasing once you let go of the button. Um, this one doesn't do that. As soon as you let off the button, it's gone and the atomizer stops firing. There's no, you can't hear it sizzling afterwards. Um, they, they just, they did such a good job with both of these pieces. I think this is the best possible combination you could have. You can sub ohm. You don't have to sub ohm. Um, it, now it is a long shot. You can puff on it normally. If I shut the airflow completely down, you can, you can do a regular puff, but it's very intense. Even at six milligrams, it's very intense. And I'm using a 50-50 blend. Um, it, it's very intense using it as a normal puffer. I, I would recommend nothing more than three milligrams if you're gonna use it for a normal puffer. Lung shot, six, go six all the way. You can inhale fast. You can inhale slow, 
It doesn't matter. This thing is a freight train. Let's see how fast it goes. See what I mean? Most atomizers would fall short at that point. The faster you inhale, the less vapor you get, right? Not with this. I'm impressed. I'm very, very impressed. Go get one. I don't care what site you get it off of. My buddies at Kanger Wholesale, they've been really good to me. I would suggest them. They've got really good prices. Their customer service is fantastic. Um, my buddies over at VaporCrave.com, not sure if they're carrying it yet, but as soon as they are carrying it, get it. Use coupon code DAISY to get a little discount on your order. They've got some really great stuff on their website too. They've been really good to me over the years. So hit them up. Mike, the guy that owns Vapor Crave, he's a fantastic guy and he, he knows what he's doing. If you have questions, it's one of the few people I have found that you can call the number on the website and if he doesn't answer it, he'll get right back to you. And when he does, you know, when you are talking to him, you can sit on the phone with him for an hour and a half. He doesn't care. I mean, obviously he's a busy guy, but he will take whatever time you need in order to understand what you're getting, ask any questions, what color does it come in? Is it more of a pink or a rose? I, even stupid little questions that you really shouldn't bother with, he will answer and he doesn't get irritated. He doesn't get short with you. Um, if you ever need to do a return, he's really good with the returns. He doesn't bulk at it at all. Um, it's just, it's a really good company and a really good guy. And um, I would highly recommend ordering from his site. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I am busy, but I will get to them as soon as I can. Love you guys. God bless you. Have a good one.